We're going to be talking about should alcohol be taken into the stands at football games? I mean, Rory, just before we broke there, you were saying that you think it's a good idea. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people talking about this and a lot of people having their say on this. We want to hear from you guys as well. Get in contact with us on the phone lines 03717 to have your say. Rory, it, can it happen in the Premier League? I think it needs to. I think it needs to. Firstly, I don't really like the idea. I think it's very draconian, and I think it's I think it's a it's a measure that was put into football stadiums to to curb a problem that I don't think exists to the level that it once did. It's a it's an extreme thing to do if you think about it. You you may very not extreme. adults may not drink a legal substance in view of the pitch, and I understand when the when the law was created, it was needed. But I don't think that we're we're dealing in the same landscape. Do you anymore. think we've come we've 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 come further than that now? Yeah, I think, think football we've... football isn't what it what it was once. It's why I believe that safe standing is something that that should happen. It's why I believe that that having uh, having the ability or the capability to drink alcohol within reason is also something that should happen. The other reason, however, why I think it's it's needed and almost should be encouraged is because there is a huge problem. Of, of atmosphere in football stadiums. There is actually an epidemic of of a lack of atmosphere that is sweeping across the mm. country. And this isn't... But this is alcohol going to fix that? Basically, if people are... Yeah, cause basically so. It what makes people rowdy. Do we, do we need, I was going to say that. Do we need to be careful? Because basically what we're saying is if people are under the influence or more drunk, mm. then they're more likely to sing more songs and be merry. But then it, I suppose if we're, if we're playing devil's advocate here, people... From the other side, we think maybe this isn't said. We say that it would just lead to more discourse. It would lead to more bad behaviour. It would lead to more abuse, yeah, discrimination, etc. It, et cetera, it, it, et it, possi it possibly, it possibly will. But equally, having football fans in the stadium is more likely to lead to that than having no football fans in the stadium. Like, where yeah. do you draw the line you, here? You have to you have treat to be, people yeah. like adults. Treat people like adults. Treat people like responsible adults. And equally, don't punish everybody. Lots of people, me included, enjoy a pint or a, or a pint or two, and don't descend into abhorrent behaviour. Mm. Don't punish everybody because there there are some, potentially some, fans who will misbehave. Um, TalkSport's chief correspondent Alex Crook is in support of alcohol being drunk in the stands. Here's what you had to say. It's long overdue, actually, uh, allowing fans, not just in the in the women's game, but in the men's game as well, to, to drink in view of the pitch. It seems a very archaic rule to me. The argument is that fans intoxicated are more likely to cause trouble. I'd go the other way. I think under the current rules, what you're doing actually is encouraging supporters to binge drink mm -hmm. as much as they can before the game, get down at half time, down another pint in, in 10 minutes and get back in their seats. I think actually responsible drinking would be encouraged if you're allowed to sit and, and, and have a, a beer or a glass of wine during a match. I think that's and, and before we'd even heard what Crookie said we were talking about this off air early wasn't we and that's, that's one of the big points that came to my mind straight away that by by saying that you can't drink at football matches in your seat mm. when is, is the longest time when you're observing the sport you you are basically saying right, gu right guys everybody get your drinks in because once you get yeah. in here you're not getting anything apart from 15 minutes to half time, and, and, and it has and, and it has such a such a bad a impact on the atmosphere because I think what happens is people fancy a drink, so at about 35 minutes they start heading down to the concourse. Yeah, they don't come up until 60. Because you want to beat, you want to beat the you want to beat, and, and yeah. you want to you want to get as much as as possible. There's been times where I've seen like just because you might get to a game late or you might go to a toilet or something. I've seen people. That are watching the game downstairs in the that, telly, yeah, on downstairs the telly, on but the telly. with, with, with yeah, a drink. Yeah. Which to me, because listen, just on a personal, you know, I'd, I'd much rather watch the game. To me personally, I don't really have a massive need for to be drinking mm. at, at, at at the game whilst I'm watching it. But I understand many and thousands and thousands of fans do. But to me, that's wild yeah. to see people choosing to not. They have paid their money for their yeah. ticket, but don't want to watch it in do, person. Do, watch it in the do, back. Do, do you know? Do you know what? So I, think, I think on this, insane. on this. It's, it's a draconian law that is totally unnecessary now. There is no reason to treat people like children and to punish the entire football stadium for the transgression of a, a small minority decades ago. It's, mm. it's so out of date. It's so not necessary now. But there is a bolder point here and a more important point, and that is about stadium atmosphere. Like, it's linked to the lack of alcohol. 
but it's linked to many things. It's linked to this swathe of of money that has come across the league. It's linked to this desire from football owners to price out as many football fans as they possibly can on some fronts. It genuinely seems like there is, is a desire to that. specifically um to, to specifically price out certain certain fans. Like genuine I'm I'm talking incredibly generally here. But if you think about who makes a racket? Who makes a racket of football? But by and large, mm. I would say it's generally youngsters. Yeah. They can't afford to go. If I honestly, and I'll use Chelsea as the example here so that people don't think I'm being tribal. Yeah. I would say that the average age of a season ticket holder at Chelsea is 58. Really? Honestly. Yeah, because, because it's just so expensive. Well, it's, it's, it's expensive. Or people we, who have held it for years and years it's, and years. It's expensive. We don't do anything to encourage the youth. We don't do anything to make it easy for them. I would say that there is such a such an easy way to solve this, to make sure that the atmosphere is good. And it's so simple. All you need to do is create an area of the stadium that is very cheap to stand or to sit or whatever you can do, but to stand cheaply, but equally make sure that it's unreserved seating so that mm. people can get in there with their mates. They don't need to be sat together and they can congregate. Yeah, because it is really hard to actually do that to get to, to get seats yeah, together. You end, up, you end up with a single ticket on your own. How yeah. much noise? How confident? And then you're going to need alcohol then. Yeah. <laughs> Just by yourself. Um, we're going uh, to read out a quick text here before I get straight to the phone lines. Um, and this is from um, Jimbo, a Spurs fan. He says, I think allowing alcohol in, in seats during games is a good idea. It could reduce binge drinking, much like in Mediterranean cultures where medit- uh, med- moderation is encouraged. However, as a Spurs season ticket holder my main concern is the disruption fans getting up frequently for toilet breaks could be frustrating for others trying to watch the game just my two cents oh my god because you know a lot more drinking oh need the toilet oh sorry excuse me mate are we, are we genuinely going to explore some chap's <laughs> inability to move out the way of some other chap <laughs> who might need a wee at the football I don't care. Mate, move. Stand it happens up. when someone wants a hot dog or someone wants to beat the traffic or when people are late back at half I time. I can't debate this, happens. mate. I cannot happens. debate someone having to get up because they might. somebody else in their yeah. row might need the toilet. Yeah, but what if that's happening all around the stadium because oh, everyone needs a wee? Grow up. It's football. What? Get out of the way. Stand up. You should be standing up anyway. But, but doesn't everything say standing? You should be standing up anyway. You should be standing up in the seated areas anyway. Um, let's get to the phone lines. Me days an Arsenal fan. Um, what do you think to... If the Premier League was to introduce this to the pre- uh, to, to the men's games, that you know drinking is is allowed in the seats. Um, I don't it's a great show. Thank you, um, thank you, mate. I think it's a, I think it's a terrible idea. Um, I think it encourages chaos. Um, there's a number of reasons. I think firstly, we're we're living in a bit of delusion if we think that allowing drinking in seats will stop people binge drinking. We've created a culture of meeting up with your mates before the game to get a pint have a couple of drinks, it will just continue um, and it will get even worse. Two, I think celebrating a goal, I don't want to be covered in pints, which is probably what will happen. Um, and three, in the, we, we only sell uh, alcohol now or drinks in the halves and before the game. If we were to continue, to continue selling it for the whole game, we'd have people getting up, we'd have lo- what looks like half-empty seats in the stadium, which is not great for the brand in the Premier League. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on those. But, uh, but back to me, Day. Um, he, he says, "What's our thoughts on that, Rory?" Um, basically, saying it's a terrible idea. Yeah. Um, what? What specifically, me, Day? Are you there? Yeah. What, what, so one of one of your issues was that having the bar open is going to make people get up and down more. Yeah, you'd have people going out at whatever point in the game, whereas at the moment it's limited to before the game and at half time. See, I don't think it would have that impact. I think the fact that people could take their drinks up would mean that it wasn't quite the scrum that it has to be. I think, think people it means now, they move less. People, yeah, I think, I think it would. Also, do you know this? You know this approach to people moving at football. This like reluctance for people to move. We're not at the theatre. We're not at the opera. People can move. People can go down to the bar. People can come back up. It's supposed to be a boisterous, raucous explosion of passion. You are not at the opera. You don't have this God-given right to sit still and not be intruded upon. Mm. It's football. Yeah, but if you want the atmosphere in the seats, you, you, you've got screens by the bar as well, so you might go to the bar, get a drink, you're down there for 10 minutes. Now, they can turn the screens off. If that's the issue, turn the screens off. If you want to watch the game, you come back to the seat. If you, if so you're the, saying, so the, the screens are the on, screens off, the screens are on because you're finishing yeah. your drink downstairs. Yeah. You can turn the screens off if you're allowed mm. to take your drinks upstairs. What, me, me what, what... Talk to us a little bit more about when you're saying that the culture's already been created, sort of, that people won't stop meeting up beforehand and, and binge drinking anyway. It just basically means they can now consume even more alcohol on top of that. Yeah, I think I think we're a bit delusional to think that 
just allowing people to have seats, to the, a drink to their seats, will stop all of that happening. Suddenly, they're just going to be a bit more responsible with their drinking. You're out of your mates, you're going to watch the game, uh, maybe the sun's out, you're enjoying a drink. You're going to keep that going, and you're probably just going to have more because you're allowed to have that extra drink at your seat as well. Hmm. I do, I do, I do. That's the thing that's going to be fascinating about this, Roy, because it's not, it's not a one, it's not a one side, size fits all. Because there's going to be some people who think there's just going to be way too much drinking going on now, and and it's and it's worse, especially within football. It's got a stereotypically bad reputation for that, and it's just going to enable a lot more people to do that when it's it's fine how it is. So on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.